but I'm excited. Yeah, th there's our guest right there. Yeah. And uh, this is a live program, so people can write in on the chat and ask us questions. Gian, you are a, uh, a third year medical student. Yes, I am. At uh, California North State University. Tell us a little bit about your experience being a medical student. So being a medical student is the culmination of a dream I've had for a long time. This is, oh, Whoa, there's that teaser. sound over there. Yeah, we'll kill that. <laughs> and um, so one of the favorite stories I like to tell, and my mom likes to tell, is when I was five years old, and they asked me what I wanted to be for Halloween. And I said a doctor. Okay. And my dad got me these tiny little scrubs. He got me these plastic little tools. And there's a picture of me in my outfit. And I know it's a little cliche, you know, like, oh, huh? <laughs> how long have you known? And I was like, basically since forever. Well, I have photographic evidence. Of all the way back. <laughs> of yeah. all the way back when Age I was five. five years old. Yeah. Um, but my experience so far has been amazing. Um, of course, it's difficult. It that's, goes without saying. There's a lot to learn. And we're always learning, even now. Uh, but it's now that I'm here in third year and I get to spend time with patients, I, I really think it's worth it. Yeah. If it's something you want to do, it's worth pursuing. So this is your third year. You're obviously on your family medicine rotation here at the Auburn yeah. Medical Group, which other students can also get rotations here, although it's limited, but we, we have a relationship with your school, yes. California North State University College of Medicine. We'll ask you a little bit about your school in, in yeah, a little while. Sure. And then we also have a relationship with certain nurse practitioner programs. The one that Megan came from, uh, Vanderbilt University, and then Georgetown University, and also University of San Francisco. So, uh, you know, we get a lot of requests. So I just want to put it out there: people who are wanting to do rotations, we get a lot of requests. <laughs> we have a relationship with a few schools, so uh, please don't get your hopes up if you don't go to one of those schools, because we kind of have, <laughs> even for the nurse practitioner programs, it's hard to compete for slots with, with your program um, for various reasons. So, but, but there are rotations, so yeah. it, it doesn't hurt to ask, we'll say it that way. Yeah, absolutely, it doesn't yeah. hurt to ask. That's the only way to get yourself out there is by asking. Actually, speaking of that, I'd, I'd be curious now, how did you hear about the rotation at this location? So, Dr. Rogers is our clerkship director for family medicine and he sent out a list. Okay. Uh, it's just a list of all the sites that were available and a little blurb uh, with, with each clinic that's available. And this one caught my eye because in the blurb, it said that you were before emergency medicine turned family medicine. So I put that in there, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I, I, I would have tried to direct you to the YouTube channel probably. That wasn't there. Oh, I've got to talk to Dr. <laughs> Rogers. Got to update that. Okay. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise for me because I do have an interest in things like this. Oh, okay. But m my primary interests were emergency medicine and family medicine, primary care type things. And so to be able to come to a practice for, with someone who has been in both fields, that's something I wanted to take advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll get a little bit of information from me about comparing the two since I, I certainly have done both. and. Certainly doing family medicine. Now, now, when you say family medicine, are you thinking specifically independent family medicine or, or maybe not that specific? So independent is something I would like to do. And I understand it's very difficult. It's very challenging. My mom is an independent family physician. So that's something that I have had the privilege of seeing behind the scenes for the last 20 years or so. And for the benefit of, our, benefit of our viewers, not only is your mom independent, but we actually are part of the same independent physician association. So yeah, we, she works we with Sutter. We didn't works know that before yeah. you came here. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know that. But, but we know each other's names anyway. Yeah, yeah. so she's, she's doing very well. And an independent style is something I would like to do and something I think I could handle. I have a little bit of business experience also and a little bit of medical experience that's going to be growing. So I think it's something I could handle. Okay, this is now your, let's see, this is your second week on this rotation. Yes. So pretty early in it. This is December, so you have already been on two or three other rotations as a third year? I've been on four. You've been on four? Yes. Okay, when I say in your third year, what, what, what does that mean? Why am I saying rotations in your third year? What, 
what happens in third year compared to the other years of medical school? So that's a great question. So the first two years at our school are purely preclinical, meaning we don't do any clinical work. We focus primarily on learning all about everything there is to know about medicine, and that's quite a lot. So we <laughs> learn about things like human physiology, the way the human body works. We learn about anatomy, the way the body is put together. It's basically the nuts and bolts of the human body. And then we also learn about biochemistry, so the scientific reactions that happen within you to make things move and go. And then we talk about other systems like neurology, so that's your brain, cardiology, your heart, pulmonary, your lungs, renal, your kidneys. We learn about everything from head to toe and everything that could happen to you and everything that could affect you, or at least we try to as much as possible before we head on to third and fourth years, which we call our clinical years. And in our third and fourth year, the clinical years, we do rotations. So the way my track is set up, I did two weeks of internal medicine. So we work in a hospital. We work with patients mostly who have to stay in the hospital. So patients who are admitted. And then after that, I went on to psychiatry and did a month over at Napa State Hospital. Oh, wow. So that's one so of those. So inpatient psychiatry. So that's an inpatient psychiatry. Okay. It's one of those high level, high complexity facilities. And then I did a month of neurology. Um, I did a week of telemedicine and two weeks over at Kaiser Roseville Neurology. So I did some inpatient and outpatient for that. And then I did eight weeks of surgery over in Oroville, which is a small town on the other direction. So it's a um, northwest of Sacramento, small town, great hospital, great surgeons, great people mm -hmm. there. Um, so that was also very, very informative, and now I'm here on family medicine. So uh, for people who don't know the area, nobody's heard of Oroville, who's in other parts of the country. Yeah. Very, very close. In fact, the bordering community to Paradise, California, that was destroyed by a fire yes. well, last year or the year before. Paradise Falls Fire. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, further back than, yeah, it's been a couple of years now. Uh, so they may recognize the name from that community. Yeah. Or, or the movie that, uh, oh, who made the movie? Was it a Spielberg movie that just came out about Paradise? Yeah, there's a documentary. Yeah, I haven't watched it, yeah. but I, I yeah, that just it, yeah. came out. And and we actually have patients who, you know, their their homes were destroyed. Yeah. And instead of rebuilding, they just moved to Auburn. Mm -hmm. And so they're part of our practice. A lot now. of people have moved to Grass Valley. A lot of yeah. people have moved to Auburn. A lot of people have moved to Sacramento. So they yeah, make yes. transitions over here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you see them everywhere. So when you were talking about medical school. Uh, the first two years. You talked a lot about, a lot about the basic sciences or medical sciences, yeah. which is, it's like school. Yeah, it you're going is. going to classes, school. you're taking tests, you're exactly. studying, maybe having a lab like you would in a science class. Mm -hmm. But in addition to those those medical sciences, there's, there's other courses that you have. I'm interested in letting our audience know that there's more to medical education than just knowledge about medicine. What are yeah. some of those other courses that you took? So one of the courses that we took, and I actually think that this is one of the most important courses that we take at California North State, because not every school will offer courses like these, uh, is called a Master's Colloquium. And it's got a fancy name, but basically what it, me what it covers are the things we don't cover in basic sciences. So one of the things we talk about is ethics. We talk about responsibility of a doctor to be the advocate for the patient. We talk about how we should be caring for patients, not just in a medical standpoint, but as a, as a whole, right? We don't necessarily want to see a patient as a diagnosis. Seeing a patient as a diagnosis is reductive and kind of an archaic philosophy. We want to see, okay, so they have this issue. How does that affect their entire life? What things should we be accounting for when we take care of a patient? And then not just in terms of what we think is important, but what does the patient think is important? What do they want to come out of this visit with in terms of a solution? And kind of marrying all that together. And we cover a lot of topics like that. Mm -hmm. we, also cover, we also talk about patient wellness. So moving beyond the physical, how are you doing mentally? Especially in a time like this where, it's, where everybody is socially isolated. We are classically taught that humans are social creatures or social people. We expect to have uh, in-person interaction in our daily lives. But the problem with COVID is we're told to shelter in place, which is extremely important. 
extremely important. But with that comes a lot of unforeseen mental strain. Yeah. The disruption to daily routine, the disruption to your usual personal relationships can weigh an immense toll on someone's well-being. And by exerting that kind of a toll on your well-being, mental well-being, it exerts a toll on your physical well-being. Yeah. And we see that a lot. Good. Good. So I want to make sure people knew it's yeah. it, it's it's more than just the uh, the anatomy and the physiology. It's oh, absolutely. also how it affects the whole and, and not it goes beyond the person to the community. Yeah. It's integrated. It's all. a very integrative education and I'm really glad that California North State offers courses yeah. like the Master's Colloquium. So let's go through some of the questions and then we'll talk about where you go with the rest of third year and fourth year and Absolutely. then even beyond. Yeah. So we have a lot, a lot of people watching yeah. while it's live. By the way, if somebody's watching this after the fact and uh, wants to know how you can catch this while it's live, you need to be subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to uh, get notifications. Make sure notifications are allowed on your mobile device for when we do go live. Usually it's at 4.30 on Monday afternoon. Um, oh, people are probably wondering where Dr. Gwain is. Dr. Gwain is not here today. He gets, he gets a day off. What do you know? He gets to be with his family while they're out of school. So, uh, <laughs> Suki writes, I think he should get a mug. <laughs> and we want to have one on the table. But you're right. He should. You're right. Uh, I graduated USC in 1982 with my master's. That's Deborah. She's got a nursing background. Connie, Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas, Connie. Merry Christmas, Connie. Uh, Suki is talking to, uh, <laughs> they talk to each other. It's like its own oh, little it's great. It's a great little conversation. And I'm going over the rest of Does anyone know what time the star is supposed to be in the sky? There's supposed to be a special uh, astronomical event here. Yeah, uh, I caught an inkling of, of a headline, and yeah. it's supposed to be something that's very rare, and I haven't had a chance to read the article. Yeah, is it Jupiter and Venus? Is that what it is? Something like that. Uh, a couple of planets couple lined of up. celestial uh, in, bodies coming in line. In the, let's see, where would that be? It'd be uh, so south, southwest, I believe. Southwest sky, about, oh, I don't know, 35 degrees, 35 degrees? You definitely hard, know more than I do. Hard for me to, well, I'm asking because <laughs> I've been watching them. They, they, when, when planets are up in the, the sky at night, they catch my eye. I, I know yeah. that's not that's not just a another star. That's right. not always there. <laughs> and it's not moving. It's not an airplane. So that's how I know where the planets are. And I know that right over our neighbor's house, I get, I've been seeing these for a while. Uh, sometimes the moon goes right through where they are too, but, oh, yeah. but then you can't see them as well. All that That's moonlight. the one that I noticed because it's really big. You notice the moon? Really you, big and hard to miss. You catch it, you notice it moves. Yeah, it definitely moves. Changes position. Um, and then, was that you that answered? It says no, Gino No, that is my brother. What? There's a, a Gion and a Gino? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Gino, welcome to the show. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so he's watching and he knows when the, uh, the stars are going to be out. And Bianca... Uh, says her youngest wants to go into medicine, uh, doing A-level biology, psychology, and sociology. Well, and that's a great start. I was going to say, that, that that's the path. That's doing, the path. Doing exactly that. So we got you through first and second year. You talked about that, and, and I'm really glad that you talked about the Master's Colloquium. Colloquium. Yeah. Collo colloquium. It's kind of a hard word. And then you talked about what you've done so far in the uh, third year. You asked the third year, you're going to finish out kind of... Yeah. A general smattering of the uh, different we'll areas of medicine. Yes, yeah, so after this one, it's going to be ob -GYN. Okay. So that's obstetrics, gynecology. And then we do a little pediatrics. And then finish off with our elective block, for which I will be doing emergency medicine. Oh, very good. Do you know where? Kaiser South Sacramento. A department I once worked in. Oh, oh. well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, don't know how many of the people I knew are still <laughs> there. No, I, I think everybody I know would have been retired by now. They were, they were, you know, and I was young a long time ago. So in fourth year. So fourth year is a little bit different. It's kind of like a year where you get to explore what you want to explore. So the way fourth year works is we apply to residencies, the next level of education, about halfway through fourth year, somewhere around October, November. So we have this period of time from June to October with which to ex more deeply explore the fields we're interested in by using elective blocks. So you try to get that rotation in yeah. as early in fourth year as you can Absolutely. so it can benefit you in your decision making. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I remember these days. Yeah. So for me, I'm trying to get some things scheduled in 
And the challenge lies in scheduling because our blocks are not necessarily lining up with other hospitals blocks and their availability for fourth year medical students. And of course there's no set schedule. So hospitals will say these dates, but then another hospital will give you another set of dates oh. that might overlap. So you can't really handle both of them. So you gotta try to figure out ways to make things work. Okay. It's a little bit challenging, but well worth it because you need the insight. And then what? And then you apply to residency. And then the well, rest what, of the year. What is residency? Oh, residency. That is its That's, whole other thing. Okay. So the first four years is like a general training, right? You dip your toe and you dip your toes in a bunch of different fields. And then residency is the training for the specific field you have chosen. So, so you're committed at that point. You co yes, you very <laughs> much commit. You fight hard for your slot. And once you've got your slot, you don't want to let go. So this is really a very big decision to make in terms of what to apply to. And there are ways around it if you decide, I don't like the field or something came up and it's just, you get deeper and deeper and you're realizing more and more this really isn't for you. You can transfer to a certain point, but it, it's very difficult. So you really want to make the best choice possible the first time. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not really showing the accurate example of what most of medicine is and that I actually change specialties. That's, that's not an easy thing these days and probably harder now than it was when I did it. And, and when I did it from emergency medicine to family medicine, it was a doable shift because of the nature of the two specialties, how mm -hmm. you go from one to the other. But uh, yeah, that's not something that you go out thinking, oh yeah, if I don't like it, I'll just go from surgery to medicine or medicine to surgery. <laughs> yeah, not, not that easy to do, no. especially with the expense of medical school. Yeah. Um, there are of course loans involved hundreds of thousands of dollars, years of time, and then you move into residency. And residency is not some short six months like on the job training, it's years. The shortest residency is three years and the longest one reaches upwards of seven. So it's a and commitment. Fellowships, and, they can just keep going. Yeah, and then you add fellowships, specializations, yeah. subspecializations. Yeah. Uh, it's another year, two years, three years. Mm -hmm. It can take quite a while and that's not an investment you wanna make lightly. No, no. Yeah. So that's why you want to make good use of that first part of your fourth year. Exactly. Yeah. Good. All right. Let's see what questions or comments our, our viewers have. Yeah. So Dana, hello from Oklahoma. Hello, Dana. Hello, Dana. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And Suki uh, says, you sound very well spoken and passionate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the compliment. Bedside manner shines as you're talking to Dr. Vaughn. And then Dana uh, it tells us that her granddaughter is going to medical school. Oh, awesome. Very good, Dana. If you get Congrats a chance to your granddaughter. Tell us which school. We'd be curious to know. Absolutely. Okay. So that kind of covers all the, the questions. And we were even able to get Gino in there for, yeah. for a moment. And hey, I, little bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure many more friends and family will be seeing this after the fact oh, wow. because yeah. you just what tweeted out the, or, or sent out text with the link just as we were going live so they could see it while it's live. But it will be available on the channel along yeah. with our videos. And, and and maybe somebody that's watching, maybe you saw our video of the ear cleaning device. The I haven't yet watched it. You haven't seen that? The Spade by Axel Glade? Yeah. Yeah, but you've seen the real thing. I've seen the real yeah, thing. Yeah, you've seen it in it's action. It's very interesting. Um, been trying it a little more. I actually tried it today and got a little bit of video and yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll get to handle it's, it. It's, it's even when <laughs> even when somebody else is there, it's hard to coordinate as oh, you're looking yeah. at the screen. Yeah, we'll have to get it in your hands too. Yeah. Uh, but I'd if be curious have, to know if anybody bought one. Yeah. If they have questions for me, I'll take any questions. Okay. And it doesn't have to be about medical school. It can be about anything. You know, I've been around for a while. <laughs> a little <laughs> been bit. Around for a, while. a little bit. I've done a couple of different things other okay. than medical school. I've, yes, yeah. I've spent some time working in other businesses and other fields. Yeah, you're not the typical student. The, the I guess the, not to say that anybody's typical, but there, there's kind of this, at least when I was going through this pattern of you go through four years of undergrad and then immediately get into medical school. So you've got right. this, this period where you're preparing and taking all the right classes and studying for the MCAT and then interviewing during your last year of college so you can go straight to one. Right. Of course, many people have a so-called gap year that yeah. they work usually in the healthcare field somehow, or paramedic or whatever. And then your story though is not that 26-year-old starting medical, wait, 20, 
20, 22, 22, 26 at graduation, yeah. 22. It's to, not the traditional route. Yeah, you, you, you did something else. Yeah. So how did so, you feel that time? Going into college, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but if we're going to be completely honest, probably maturity-wise, I wasn't ready. I don't think I was. That's true for a lot of people that age. Yeah, jumping into medical school, jumping into that level of responsibility, I didn't have the discipline, I didn't have the maturity. It just wasn't in the cards for me at the time. I mean, I took the MCAT, I wasn't really disciplined about studying. You took it right out of college? I took it I took it in my senior year of college. You did, okay. I was already a year late. You're supposed to take it in your junior year. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I had been putting it off, putting it off. I didn't really want to deal with it. You know, I wanted to enjoy college, enjoy friends, enjoy, you know. <laughs> making different choices okay. uh, but taking the MCAT I didn't do well because I didn't I wasn't disciplined when studying I wasn't ready for I, w I just wasn't ready and so coming out of it it wasn't really a score I could really apply to very many places with um, so I decided to take a step back and while I was in college I was running a little badminton business out of my apartment and I, I want to say it because I know I didn't catch it the first time you said it, and our, our viewers may not have either. You actually said badminton. Yeah, badminton. The game. The racket the, sport. With yeah. the birdies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you made a business out of made it. Made a little bit of a business. So, you know, at my college, at my university, there is a strong badminton community. And it's really difficult for them to get supplies and Is this services. a secret underground community? Like... Like no. you know, they have a tattoo of a birdie <laughs> or something. And... There's a ring required for secret, entry. No. Secret handshake. Is it that kind of community? No, no, okay. not at all. Um, they're actually really welcoming. They're really friendly. They're, if you don't know how to play, they'll teach you. That's how actually how I learned. I didn't learn until I got into college. Does it get like super competitive? It can and get very competitive. Is there like an ugly dark side to it? Uh, there are certain people, at least in my time, who didn't like each other. And when they played each other, matches got kind of heated. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you typically don't aim at at another person, but sometimes you do. And got hit by a birdie. Yeah. High speed. At very high speed. And while not the most traumatic thing in the world, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> they can leave bruises. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. It's like the the paintball of uh, of, net, rack, yeah. of net sports. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> but it can it can get pretty competitive and heated. Okay. Yeah, so I made a little business out of that, made some side income, and I thought maybe I should go into business, make some money, you know, just to kind of experience life. And then, but I also wanted to combine that with a medical field, so I worked as an insurance biller and coder for a couple of years. Medical? Yeah, medical insurance biller and coder. And that was an interesting side of it. I really liked the business side of it, but I didn't like, honestly, I didn't like having to call people and ask for money. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes making that call, and nobody likes taking that call. So pick up that phone now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. And, <laughs> and These are actually, if, if, if you scroll down or turn off your chat, I guess, you'll actually see how people can get the Auburn Medical Group mug. Yeah. Just thought I'd say that. And so I did that for a little bit. I did spend some time in the Philippines and worked on, on culture and language. And I've gotten decently fluent at it. Decently. Which language? Tagalog. Okay. So for the people who don't know. You'd be the second person to work at the Auburn Medical Group that speaks Tagalog. Oh. Well, as I was saying, there's no language called Filipino. The national language is called Tagalog, and there's a lot of dialects like Cebuano, Ilocano, etc. And I only know one. So, still a lot of work to do on that front. Okay. But, um, yeah, did that. And then, when all was said and done, I wasn't really fulfilled about anything except for when I was thinking about medicine. So, kind of pulled myself up by the bootstraps, decided to be a disciplined person, Studied for the MCAT, did really well on the MCAT, applied to medical school, and here I am. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Let's get back to uh, any messages that may have come up from your comments and questions on the chat during, on YouTube here. 
Uh, Suki says medicine is one of the areas that will always need humans running and working it, not a computerized field. Although we are more and more are using computers to aid us, to make help us, us. Yes. to make us better great at what, tools what we do. to use. Yes. And Bianca, our kids chose college courses at 16. That's a I think it's a lot for young kids to choose something they want to do for the rest of their life. Our kids start university at 18. I think it's very young to know. Yeah, that's true. Many people yeah. don't know. what the, I, I changed my major when I was 19. and Although I, I love the experience in broadcasting that I, <laughs> that I had before I changed my major. Is there a Mrs. Gian and any little Gian, Suki asks. I am not married. I do but not there is, have any kids. There is Gino. <laughs> there is Gino. Uh, he's not quite little, though. He's... Uh, okay. I'm the little one. He's 10 years younger than me, but okay. he is four inches taller than me. Oh, oh, Gino. Okay. Yeah. I, I have a whole different picture of Gino. Now. <laughs> yeah. I, I will be much more respectful, Gino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in college right now, um, but with school being shut down, he's home. Oh, yeah. 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 And we'll see what happens in the spring semester. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a great kid. He's He's in nursing school. Very good. Yes. So, and he's doing quite well. Yeah, quite yeah. a medical science family. You very, guys very, yeah. very medical family. But yeah, no little genes, just very tall Gino. Just very tall Gino. <laughs> so there you have it, Suki. Anything else you want to gather? Your your social media handles or any, um, or a website you're working on or a book you just wrote? Uh, I wish I could do all those things, but I'm pretty busy studying. <laughs> He's a busy <laughs> medical student. Yes, yeah. medical school is that. I remember. Yeah. yeah, it's about all that you're doing. Yeah. I. I didn't even have an email address when I started medical school in 96. And now everyone Or, I'm sorry, one. in 92. And now everyone has like three. <laughs> I know. They have, the, they have the email for work, that's the email right. for yeah. friends and family, and the email for spam. My, my, my first one was from medical school because that's where I found out what email was, was in medical school. Yeah. Didn't even know that, what the internet was before that. But it was, like I said, I, I, it was in 92, so. <laughs> A little bit ago. All right. Well, thank you so much. And... You have been on the show, and this is the Auburn Medical Group mug with a picture of Dr. Mark and Dr. Wayne to remember us by Oh, my goodness. Gian. So that's what that was for. There you go, man. I love you it. You have the mug. And now this will be with me all the time. And now sales are going to go like crazy now that somebody's taking one away from the studio. I want you to enjoy that. And, and remember being on YouTube on the Auburn Medical Group channel. Oh, I absolutely drink from will. It. All right. I absolutely will. Thank you, Dion. Thank you and for having thank me. thank you. Thank you for watching. And uh, I guess in the absence of Dr. Gwain, we will say that he does have his blog that he did make a post on today that his son, uh, Micah, helped him with. And that's at drgreennight.com. And he would want us to thank... Who would he want us to thank? He would want us to thank Boo Boo Kitty and... <laughs> somebody, somebody tell me... Um, oh, who is it he wants... Anyway, but I would want to thank because of my patron, patron, which you can find at patreon.com slash Dr. Vaughn, Boo Boo Kitty, and Lindsay Ann Twine. So until next time, Gian, myself, Dr. Mark Vaughn, telling you to stay in good health.